Happy Sunday evening. I hope you've had a good weekend so far. And I hope that maybe we'll make it a little better tonight by getting some good hits for you. I mean, that's always the goal, right? Yeah, we like to pull the fire. So tonight, what are we opening? Three things. A half case of TriStar Autograph Mini Helmets. Those are uh, part of the back half of a case. We already opened the front part of that case. After that, we will open ourselves another case of Leaf Ultimate Draft Baseball, which has been, I have to say, really good for us, The what we've opened so far. And then finally, we're going to open a case of Contenders Football. As of right now, there are a couple of unpaid teams in Contenders Football, and if you are the underbidder on eBay for either one of those teams, you will have had a message from me. I know one of you is all lined up and ready to go, uh, and if that person hasn't paid after we break the mini helmets, then we'll go ahead and get that second chance offer to you. And our second underbidder I hadn't heard from yet, and I'll double check that at the same time. And if that person uh, hasn't paid and I haven't heard from the underbidder, then we would open that second unpaid team uh, up for sale via chat potentially but again those are both in contenders football everything in the mini helmets and everything in ultimate draft is already paid up and ready to go before we get started tonight a little information to go over if i can get us on the right page that is <laughs> so first up guys feedback completely automated i do that so you don't ever have to wait on me anytime you leave positive feedback for me you will instantly get it in return Second part of the message there, of course, is to say thank you because I do appreciate everyone who bids and breaks and chats and hangs out with me. So glad to have you here tonight. We're taking a look right now at breaks that are coming up over the next five days. This stuff is already listed on eBay. It's available uh, for bidding right now. Of course, you know what? Guess what? Like that shouldn't be there because you know why? Because um, we've already broken that. Is this like the wrong spreadsheet? Is this last night's spreadsheet? <laughs> I think it might be. Where's tonight's? I think I opened the wrong spreadsheet. Yeah, I think I did. That said the 12th, didn't it? Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, let's just back up the train. So I got to move you. Uh, I moved you back to the main screen. <laughs> I've got to find where's my other spreadsheet. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, let's just try this again. So uh, anyway, while we're, you know, waiting for this to come up where I can find it and get it loaded up onto the screen. What did you think about the games today? I was, I have to say, you know, I was really so excited when the Eagles started driving down the field. Not that I don't like the Saints, because I do like the Saints as well, but something about Nick Foles and the playoff, it's just like such a magical thing. I was so excited when they were driving down there a minute and something to go. I'm thinking, oh yeah, they're going to do it again. You know, it's like the legend of Nick Foles. They're coming back again. Uh, but guess what? No, not to be. Alshon Jeffrey uh, literally dropped the ball, and that was the end of that. Now I think I have the right spreadsheet loaded up. So now, haha, we'll try this again. <laughs> so, breaks coming up on eBay, of course. Uh, tomorrow night we have Leaf Best of Football, a case of Dominion Basketball, some Bowman's Best Baseball. On Tuesday, we're going to open a pair of autograph batting helmets, a full size helmet, and a mini helmet, uh, both in that box. We will also open a pair of Gold Rush Autograph Mini Football helmets and a Leaf Autograph Football jersey, as well as a third case of Contenders Football. On Wednesday, we'll be opening Leaf Ultimate Draft Baseball again and more Leaf Best of Football. Thursday, Dominion Basketball, and we're going to open Prism Basketball Retail, okay? So it's going to be a half case of Retail Prism, and uh, that's 10 boxes. On Friday, we'll open a half case of Leaf Autograph Mini Helmets. We're doing TriStar tonight. It'll be Leaf on Friday. And then an eighth and final case of Optic Football will be Friday night. So that will, if you're a fan of Optic, that's going to wrap up Optic for us this year uh, as of Friday night. So what we're opening tonight, of course, our Mini Football Helmets are going to be up first. That is a free shipping break, as many of you know. Uh, anytime we do completely free shipping, I always predict project it to go out six or seven days after an auction ends. It usually goes out before that, but what I'm basically telling you is it should be no later than Saturday that your mini helmets will go out if you win one of those tonight. Also, if you don't hit in the mini helmet break tonight, you are entitled to a consolation card. It can be from any year in any series. 
I keep track of it for 90 days, rolling 90 days. And typically I would send it out with your next package since this is a free shipping break. But if you want it sooner, you hit me up and let me know. We'll take care of it for you. Our paid shipping breaks tonight, that is the Leaf Ultimate Draft and Contenders Football, should be on the way to you no later than Thursday, possibly sooner, but no later than Thursday. And if you get skunked in uh, Ultimate Draft, your consolation would go with the rest of the break since it's a paid shipping break. And of course, everybody's going to pull cards in Contender, so you don't have to worry about that. So first up tonight, five boxes of 2018 TriStar Hidden Treasure Series 2 Autograph Mini Football Helmets, half case break number 10. Everything we are opening tonight ended tonight on eBay, Sunday night, the 13th of January of 2019. We have our team names on the left-hand side. Winning bidders are across from it on the right-hand side. New spreadsheet goes up before every break. So if you're not in this one, you hang tight. You're going to see your name up there shortly. And last but not least, let me get the uh, autofocus out of the way here. That's why your background's out of focus a little bit. I manually set it, but no worries. We're going to be able to see everything okay. All right, so in chat, who's in chat tonight? Griffin is here. T. Cassidy is hanging out with us. Greg, you like the Kansas City Chiefs and the Rams so far uh, headed for the... Uh, for the playoffs, huh? Travis, I agree with you. The first game uh, was super boring because the Patriots just beat the absolute stuffing out of them, man. I mean, that was hideous. Hideous. Chargers look like a high school football team out there. Ay, ay, ay. So, yeah, I agree. That was boring. I didn't watch all that game either. In fact, I didn't watch most of that game. I had stuff to do anyway. Edward says the Patriots are going to win it all again. Thomas says, Patriots, he hates them, but they're so good. <laughs> Buckeye wants anybody but the Patriots. You guys all have very strong feelings about the uh, Patriots there, don't you? All right, so first up, we have ourselves, uh, it is actually on a collegiate helmet. You can see the autograph there, but it's going to go to current team, JSA authentication sticker on the back. And, of course, the current team for Ryan Tannehill is going to be the Dolphins. So you got a little Ryan Tannehill autographed helmet out for the Dolphins uh, first out of here tonight. Yeah, Griffin, next weekend we probably will have some pretty good games. I mean, of course, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Patriots rematch that first game this year was so good. So um, it's it, it should be an interesting weekend for sure. For sure, for sure. I'm looking forward to the games to see where we go from there. The Arizona Cardinals pull out Roger, I never say his name right, Worley, but I don't think that's really how you say it. Um, anyway, you can see it there. It is authenticated with a little sticker there on the back. Of course, you've also got that Hall of Fame inscription across the top. And a little generic TriStar thing that, I mean, it's not specific to that item, but you scan that and it just brings up the, um, the app where you can type in the code <clears throat> from the authentication sticker. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so those are in some of them, but not in all of them, that little generic thing, I mean. So I don't know. We'll see. Thomas, you think the Chiefs look unstoppable? Well, most of you know I really enjoy watching Pat Mahomes play. I just think it is fun to watch the Chiefs play this year. I love that kid, and I would not be at all sad if the Chiefs roll right on to the Super Bowl. I would be perfectly fine with that. We have my Pittsburgh Steelers with a little Rocky Blyer coming out of there. And he's also got a Hall of Fame inscription along with it. There's your authentication sticker on the back. And the little uh, information card for him. And then the generic uh, dealio there as well. So there's three of our five out and about. Rob is here. Hi, Rob. And Ian is here. Hi to Ian as well. And um, 
what else are you guys yeah <laughs> that's funny buckeye says it's the four best offensive teams playing so it'll probably be low scoring lol <laughs> i know right it's just gonna be crazy isn't it it's gonna be uh, like a hundred points to a hundred points or some ridiculous something we have ron yari coming out hall of fame inscription on it this is for the minnesota vikings there's our authentication uh there on the back your little sticker and the tristar generic thing and the little ron yari information card so right now we are vikings cardinals steelers dolphins with one left to go <laughs> Thomas says Patriots jerseys are banned in the state of Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, you're probably not wrong about that, man. It's like you can't cross the can't come across the state border <laughs> with a Patriots jersey. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Yeah, Greg, you are right. It has been a long time for the Chiefs. Uh, I, you said 1970. I, I knew it had been a while. I didn't know it was that far back, but yeah, that is a while. Authentication here on the back. You've got the Dallas Cowboys. That is Mel Renfro. And you've got, uh, looks like a Hall of Fame inscription on it as well. Your TriStar generic thing and your Mel Renfro little informational card. All right, so as we recap our jerseys, I'm going to put them back in their boxes, and I'm going to write the team name on the top so we can save a little time when it comes time to ship it and get it on the way to you. So that was the Cowboys there with Mr. Renfro. And then, of course, we've got the Ron Yari here for the Vikings that we will be sending out. This is the last of the TriStar mini helmets. I do have one more case of Leaf mini helmets. Those tend to often be Steelers and Rocky Blyer. Uh, those tend to be usually a little more geared towards current players, the Leaf stuff. I mean, not exclusively current players. You do still have Hall of Famers and things in it too. But TriStar... I think, is usually geared a little bit more towards Hall of Famers uh, and not as much with current. There's Roger w Worley. I mean, again, that's how I say it. I don't know if that's right or not. That's for the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, somebody's typed in here to me. I hadn't looked over there how to say it. Rhymes with girly. So, all right. Well, I got pretty close then. I, Worley, girly. Yeah, it got to be kind of close. Griffin says it's old school night on the helmets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, I guess. Except for the Ryan Tannehill. I mean, he's current player, of course, on his uh, Texas A&M collegiate helmet is the signature, but um, uh, of course goes to his current team of the Dolphins. And if anybody doesn't know how that sort of thing works, there is uh, something at the bottom of every uh, auction description that talks about, you know, what happens if they're on a franchise that's renamed or relocated or college jersey, that sort of stuff. All right, let me get these moved out of the way. Then I'm going to check on the payment status um, of our contenders football and potentially send out a second chance offer or two there. And then we'll be doing Leaf Ultimate Draft. So bear with me here for a second while I check on a little payment stuff. I know, if people would just pay on time, it'd be so much better. Oh, man, I just did something weird. Hang on. I don't know what I even did there. Wow, I didn't even know what I just did was even possible. Oh, freaky. Um, <laughs> I hit something in Excel, and it did something really strange, but whatever. And yeah, eh, it sort of fixed back. So I'm going to let you look at that for a minute. You've probably already seen it. You've probably read it by now. But in case you have not, there is the information that you need to know about shipping and consolation cards and such. All right. And it looks like um, the team. Okay. So my underbidder that I was speaking with on eBay, just to let you know, that payment did come in. So uh, I'm going to message you here as well to let you know that. Um, and now we do still have one that is hanging out there. Let me see if I've heard from that underbidder. Um, 
So let me check on that, guys, while you're still, I know, you're stuck on that boring page. Should I put you on a, now that you've seen that page here, you want to look at that page for a minute while I finish this up? I know, I'm sorry to leave you stuck. Uh, let's see. All right, so that one is taken care of. We do still potentially, guys, have a team open in Contenders Football have not heard from that underbidder yet either, so we're going to kind of let that ride for a minute. And after we do Leaf Ultimate Draft, if we have not um, not gotten payment, we'll have a team open there potentially. So we'll see where we end up with that. And uh, that would be the Broncos, guys. But again, we're going to wait and see if payment may come in. Somebody might be tied up or whatever. So I'm just kind of giving you a heads up. Might be coming, but not we don't know yet for sure. We'll check again after Leaf Ultimate Draft. So this is a 12 box case of 2018 Leaf Ultimate Draft Baseball. It's a full case break. It is break number three. Team names on the left, winning bidders on the right. And of course, uh, one team in here not on the checklist. I typed in no bids buyback, but that's not right. It's actually not on the checklist and it was uh, not listed for sale. So the Minnesota Twins, that's why it wasn't listed because they're not on the checklist. And of course, this will always go to current team because these guys, uh, you know, it's a Leaf product. Leaf and Panini both uh, have to airbrush out the team logos and such because they don't have the MLB deal. Tops does. So as a result, it doesn't list them on there, which means it's going to go to its current team. A lot of them... I will probably know as we see them any that I don't know um, I probably have on a little cheat sheet that I have written out the ones that I have a tendency to forget so hopefully we'll be able to identify most of them as we go through the break if there are some that we don't know um, of course the way we would determine the current team would be to use milb.com minor league baseball website the official website or of course mlb.com if they happen to be a current player rather than a rather than a uh, farm system minor leaguer all right now now i got to get caught back up on chat i was busy doing all that other stuff buckeye you have a rocky oh you have a rocky autographed jersey that's pretty cool I like Rocky. He's pretty outspoken. <laughs> I mean, he came out earlier this year and basically just, I mean, did everything but called the Mike Tomlin and a few others just like a piece of crap, practically. He's, <laughs> which I guess, you know, being that he is a, a Hall of Famer for uh, the Steelers, I mean, I guess you can't, guy's got a right, I guess, to call him out for whatever he wants, but... But yeah, it is, uh, Rocky's a very outspoken fellow, that's for sure. He has, <laughs> has some very strong opinions, but you got to love the guy. Greg, you said the Patriots cried so badly that they gave him a fumble. <laughs> you know what, I think I probably had it turned off by that point, um, I had it on in the background. I had some other stuff to do. I had some family stuff today, which is often how Sundays go along. And then um, worked a little as well with it on in the background. And at one point, it just got so out of hand that I thought, you know what? I don't even have any interest in listening to this. And I just turned it off. So, Greg, um, you were asking about the price on the Broncos. I don't know it off the top of my head. I will look and see again after we do this break if it's still setting unpaid. Then uh, we'll get into the pricing and all that. Although it looks like Jordan has kind of already jumped in and spoken for it there. And Travis, I see you were asking about it as well. Greg, I definitely have more Leaf Ultimate Draft Baseball. Um, I have got, what is this, our third case? I gotta think, what do I have here? Four, five, uh, wait a minute, four. I think I have six cases of it in total. It's either six or seven, and I, uh, maybe seven, I don't know, six or seven. More than, more than this, anyway. So we will for sure be having more breaks of Leaf Ultimate Draft. For sure, for sure. 
<laughs> Buckeye says anybody that has a steel plate in them has a right to speak out. <laughs> Talking about Rocky. Um, well, like I said, man, he's earned the right. I said that. He's earned the right to, you know, say whatever he wants to wants to say. He doesn't mince words either. He just let it, he lets it fly. But that's all right. You gotta love Rocky. Okay, first out here is Jessen Rosario. And Jessen is one I never remember. A Padre. Why have I had... Why do I have such a hard time remembering him? I don't know. There's Louis Robert. That is, of course, the White Sox. Ryan Rollison comes out for the Rockies. William Contreras makes an appearance for the Braves. You have Jordan Groshans, who shows up in pretty much everything these days. He's a Toronto Blue Jay. Shohei Otani, baby. We are three for three. Three cases, three Shohei Otani autographs. Oh, yeah. This is why I love Leaf Ultimate. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Greg, I know it was bad what happened there at the end with the Eagles. I mean, you know, Alshon Jeffrey, it just went through his hands. I mean, I'm sure the guy feels terrible. There's nothing you can do about it. The throw was on point. It just, it's one of those things. And as uh, unfortunate circumstances would have it, it bounced off his hands and right into the hands of the Saints. Andrew uh, Kinzer there is a St. Louis Cardinal. We are looking right now at Jason Schroeder. Jason is numbered 225, and he is an Astro. Lucan Baker, numbered to 25, St. Louis Cardinals. Then we have Xavier Edwards. Have a hard time remembering Xavier, so let me look him up. I know I have him written down. A Padre again. Why am I not remembering any of the Padres tonight? Jesus Sanchez to 25. A nice one for the Tampa Bay Rays. Nolan Gorman. That's a nice one for the Cardinals. Griffin, you need some Cincinnati Reds tonight? We'll see what we can find for you in the Reds. Greg, you think Nick Foles is going to cost $35 million? Holy cow. That would be a gigantic upgrade in his salary. Well, he might get it, though. You never know. Numbered to five, there is Jeremiah Jackson. That is an angel. Glaber Torres comes out for the Yankees. Logan Gilbert makes an appearance and gets the Mariners on the board. Shane McClanahan is out. Shane is a Tampa Bay Ray. Esteban Floreal is a very nice hit for the Yankees, numbered to 15. And there's your man Juan Soto, and it's numbered to 25. So Nationals, we've pulled Juan Soto out of our other two cases as well, but the other two weren't numbered. So that's the first numbered Juan Soto that I've pulled. So that, again, very nice hit. Of course, Shohei Otani, three for three. Three cases, three Otanis. I like our odds. Means we're in for another another hot case, it looks like. The Tigers, Parker Meadows to 25. Jared Kalenic comes out for the Mariners. That's a nice one. Then you have Grayson Janista. Grayson is numbered to 15, and he goes to the Braves. Here's Caden Griner, Grinier, Grinier. I don't know. He's an Oriole anyway. Ryan Weathers, the Padre that I can remember. And baby Vlad. Yay. Vlad Guerrero Jr. Out for the Tampa, or Tampa Bay Rays. Try that again. Out for the Toronto Blue Jays with baby Vlad. Who, again, that. We might, I think we're three for three on, on Vlad Jr. too, maybe, out of leaf. We've definitely hit him in two. I think we hit him in all three. Owen White to 15. That's going to be the Texas Rangers. Seth Beer for the Astros. Joe Adele, another nice hit for the Angels, who are doing quite well tonight. Lion Richardson, numbered to 10. I don't remember, but I have it on my cheat sheet, I'm pretty sure. A red. Why don't I remember Lion Richardson and he's a Cincinnati red? What is wrong with me? I don't know, but I don't remember him. So, whoops, sorry. 
But there is your red, at least. <laughs> at least Griff and I. I forgot he was a red, but he is a red. For the Pirates, it is O'Neill Cruz. Here's your Acuna. We are three for three uh, with Mr. Acuna as well. One, uh, At least one in every case we've opened so far. That one numbered 225. Greg, I think you're right. I think we did have a couple of Vlad Guerrero Juniors out of one case. Um, we in that same case, I believe we hit Bichette in there and some other nice Blue Jays all in that one. Maybe case, I don't remember if it's case one or two. We broke them both the same day. But anyway, Brady Singer for the Kansas City Royals. And Griffin Roberts, number 225. And Griffin Roberts is a St. Louis Cardinal. This is Ryder Green for the Yankees. Ronaldo Hernandez, I got to look up. Ronaldo is a Tampa Bay Ray. A second Floreal for the Yankees. The first one we saw was numbered, of course. That one's unnumbered, but a nice hit nonetheless. There's a nice hit for the Detroit Tigers. Your number one overall draft pick, Casey Mize. 15. Number 15 of 15. Ooh, somebody was trying to come right sliding on out of the top loader there, weren't they? Yeah, some of these aren't, you know, they're kind of riding around in there a little bit. But not to worry, because I put them in team bags anyway before they go out the door. So that kind of mitigates any problem we might have with somebody rolling around out of their out of their housing, if you will. Grayson Rodriguez was an Oriole. There is a really nice Alec hit for the Phillies. That is numbered 215. Stanglover needs some Mets, huh? We'll see if we can find you some Mets. Meanwhile, we have Noel V. Marte for the Mariners. Nice one. Nick Madrigal for the White Sox. Another nice one. A second Joe Adele. This one numbered to 25. Angels are kind of crushing this. Cole Roterer for the Cubbies. So apparently Manny Machado has come down to the Phillies and the White Sox. I just saw the Nick Madrigal made me think of that. And I read an article today that said somebody was speculating that the Phillies might not really go after Harper that hard, especially since Harper said he doesn't want to be there, that they might try to sign Manny now and then wait when uh, Trout is a free agent after, what, 2020, is he? Or is he 2021? 2020, maybe. Uh, and then try to try to get Trout in a couple of years. So I don't know, man. I mean, what would that cost them? Six, seven hundred million dollars to sign the two of them? It'd be something crazy like that. Travis Swaggerty to 10 for the Pirates. And Michael Grove numbered to 15. Michael Grove, I always have to look up. I can't retain him for some reason. He is a Dodger. And this is Oh, Simeon Woods Richardson. Oh, dang. I know where that kid plays, and why can't I? Oh, I know where that kid plays, and I can't think of it. And I know I don't have that written down because we don't pull him out of here very often. Um, but I can't remember where he plays off the top of my head. I have to look that one up. For the Blue Jays, or the, um, yeah, the Blue Jays, Adam Kloffenstein, numbered to 15. Jordan Adams to 25 for the Angels. Here's a nice Joey Bart to 25 for the San Francisco Giants. And we still have, we got, yeah, three boxes plus this one. We still got a little ways to go if we haven't hit for you yet. We're, we're working on it. Alec Thomas for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Next out is Nick Schnell, Tampa Bay Rays. Travis Swaggerty out again for the Pirates to 15 on that one. This is numbered to five. A little Josh Bro for the Yankees. Jesus Sanchez for the Tampa Bay Rays. And a redemption. Fernando Tatis Jr. and the Padres. Three for three on uh, those as well. We've had at least one in uh, all three of our cases for Fernando. So, yay. I mean, Leaf Ultimate's pretty darn good this year. 
checklist was good. What we pull has been really good. I've been happy with it. Hopefully you guys are too. Casey Mize comes out again for the Detroit Tigers. Mason Denneberg, hey, hey, for the Nationals to 25. I think we pulled him in, I don't think we pulled him in either of our other cases. Grant Levine and the Colorado Rockies, that is numbered to 10. And, oh, look, there's a Cincinnati red. It's Mike Ciani. Of course, we had the other red that I didn't remember was a red. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't remember Logan or Lion Richardson was a red, but yeah. Elio Ramos, that is the San Francisco Giants. There is a second Acuna for the Braves. We are next to last box here. DJ Peters to 10 for the Dodgers. Will Banfield comes out. Will goes to the Marlins. There's Libertore for the Tampa Bay Rays. This is the Mets, Ronnie Mauricio. And then you have Kiebert Ruiz, Dodgers. A Wander Franco uh, redemption. I think we're three for three on that one, too. Of course, Wander Franco is a Tampa Bay Ray and quite a desirable hit these days. So here we are on our last box for Last Box Mojo of this case of Leaf Ultimate Draft. So for those of you who haven't hit what you want yet, now's the time to get the mojo flowing. Let's see if we can conjure it up for you. Jameson Hanna. And Jameson is, uh, is he an Oakland A? Let me see. I can't remember for sure. Yes, he is Oakland A's. Carlos Hernandez. And Carlos is a Kansas City Royal. Noah Naylor, the Indians managed to sneak one in here towards the end, numbered to 25. Osiris Johnson, I think. Is he a Marlin? Let's double check him. Yes, he is a Marlin. A printing plate. That means we've got ourselves a little one of one. I like that plan. And our one of one is Braxton Ashcraft. And that is for the Pittsburgh Pirates with your autographed printing plate. And last out, worth waiting for, that is Beau Bichette, numbered to 15 for the Toronto Blue Jays. So there's only one, guys, that I'm going to look up real quickly here, um, and that is uh, Simeon Woods Richardson, because I just, I mean, I know the, like, I've seen that kid's card a million times, but for some reason, I just can't come up with it right off the top of my head, and I know I don't have him written down, so bear with me. I'm going to look that up real quickly. And as soon as I can get him up here uh, on MILB.com, we'll make it all nice and official. I'm sure Stanglover knows what he's talking about, but you know I always make him official. And he does, in fact, know exactly what he's talking about. And uh, that is the New York Mets for Simeon there. So I'm going to write him on my uh, cheat sheet here. So the next time I see him, hopefully, if I don't remember it from looking him up, I'll at least have it written down as a point of reference. So we're going to recap this. I'm not going to read the teams off again and all that kind of stuff. We're just going to fly through it, take another look at it. So if you missed them before, you're going to get... Uh, I've had something. No, oh, this is a piece of styrofoam or something. You'll get another uh, look at them here as they go by one more time. So another nice case of... Leaf Ultimate Draft, where we found Otani and Acuna and Soto, our number one and our number two overall draft picks. M many, most of our high round draft picks showed up in here. Tatis, I forgot Fernando. Yeah, another, probably, I guess, really, technically, I would say Fernando Tatis might be considered like the top overall prospect if you were to look at all of the all of the minor leaguers uh, he's if he's not at the top he's going to be pretty darn close pretty close pretty close 
course, Vlad Guerrero Jr. also going to be very highly rated out of there. So, Stanglover, we did manage to find you a couple of Mets, so you didn't end up going home empty-handed anyway. Uh, Griffin, you're right. We didn't find, uh, we did not find any Jonathan India tonight, for sure. We didn't. I did see, though, that, uh, who is it? Somebody's sniffing around that wants, um, the Padres, I think it is. They're sniffing around wanting, uh, Nick Senzel. And, of course, you know, they have a need at third base, so, but who are they going to give us? It's like, they're not going to give us Fernando Tatis. And Nick is probably rated in the top five of overall prospects. And Fernando's probably one or two in him. So, I mean, that would just kind of be a weird even swap, which I don't see happening. I think we're going to try to slap, uh, slap him out there in center field is what it sounds like, which is just so stupid. But we, we, have, a, uh, we have a problem of way too many infielders. So, I don't know. I don't know what will happen, but... But they have been sniffing around him anyway, from what I'm told. Well, not what I'm told, what I read. Yeah, they didn't call they didn't call me up and discuss it with me or anything. <laughs> so, you know. Okay. Um, hi Gina. Gina is here. What's shaking, Gina? All right, while I go back here and check out and see where we stand on our unpaid team, I'm going to um get you guys just looking at the shipping information again here for a second. I know it's boring to look at that, but then again, people do jump in and out all the time, and so some of you may not have seen it before, so you have a minute to look at that while I am looking at this. Okay, so it looks like that um, we do have the Denver Broncos that are going to be available here in Contenders Football uh, last bid price was one thirty four fifty. So I know someone spoke earlier and said they might want it. Um, now that the price is out there, if you do want this, um, kind of jump in here and let me know where you are with everything. And I'm going to bring you back to the home screen for a minute because I'm going to have to go in and update our team owner here for... Uh, for the Broncos. So let me get in here and work on that for a hot second. And we'll see where we end up here as to who, who wants to pick up the Broncos tonight. Pick up the slack from our, uh, our lovely unpaid bidder, as does happen to us these days from time to time. All right, so let's see. I think it was Jordan that said you wanted them. So Jordan, if you still want them, jump in and let me know. Otherwise, uh, I think both Greg and Travis had expressed possibly some interest wanting to know the price. So again, guys, what we're talking about is the Denver Broncos in contenders. That's the unpaid team that is setting open right now. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we can work on this for a minute. All right, so did Jordan take off? Did all you, did everybody take off? Greg, Jordan, all of you who are interested in the Broncos, did you leave? <laughs> is, there, is there no one left that wants the Broncos? Yes, no, maybe. Of course, I, I'm going to go ahead and take our... Um, actually what I'll do, I guess, before we get all those out of there, let's go ahead and we'll look at the spreadsheet right now. It's just sitting as an open spot. So this is 12 boxes of 2018, uh, contenders football full case break. It is break number two. Instead, we'll go up here and put this, uh, like that cause it is unpaid and, um, there we go. So of course this also ended tonight on eBay Sunday night, the 13th. Team names on the left, winning bidders across from it on the right-hand side. The Broncos are uh, the team that is in play. Jordan, you do want them? Okay. All right. Awesome, man. I didn't know if you had taken off uh, or not. I know you had spoken for them earlier back up in chat. So uh, you still have my email info 
that I use for PayPal. Yes, Jordan? I think you do. If you do, then I will um, leave that to you to shoot over. If you need me to type it in again, let me know. And as soon as I get these boxes out of this case, we'll go in and I'll go in and cancel the uh, original order in eBay since that is unpaid. And we'll slide those over to you, Jordan. All right, here's our boxes out. Let me go into eBay here and cancel that unpaid guy. And then update the spreadsheet to show that it is Jordan. And we'll be good to go. All right, so let's cancel this one. And there we go. All right, that's done. We'll update this to say second chance. All righty. So that's done. And I'm almost, almost ready to rock and roll, guys. All right. Oh, Jordan, you need to... Um, yeah, that's fine. I, I don't actually even have it in front of me, but it was something really close to that. So if that's not it, that's close enough. Um, so yeah, that works for me, man. If you want to shoot that amount over, that will be uh, perfect. We'll be in good shape there. And let me get back to where I need to be now. And there's the spreadsheet just showing the update uh, that we changed that on the Broncos to be a second chance offer for Jordan. And thank you for picking that team up. You're always so good about coming in and picking up stuff from these people who don't pay. And believe me, I, I really do appreciate it. I hope that we'll have some good luck to reward you for your kind deed there, hopefully. So Contenders Football. Probably everybody has opened Contenders Football or been in a break for Contenders Football somewhere along the way. If not this year, some other year. Because it's one of the most fun to break out of all the football products. Not because they're super flashy or anything like that. But because they're kind of the gold standard, if you will. I mean, it's the, isn't it, it's, it's the card you always want. <laughs> if you're the, if you've got the... If you're after somebody's rookie card, it's like the contender's card kind of sets the bar almost. You know, they're not as pricey as National Treasures or Flawless or anything like that, but there's just something about contenders that that is a lot of fun. I always look forward to it every year. So each box should have five autographs in it, and at least one of them should be on card, according to Panini. Now, like anything else, Panini, they always say on average. And what that means is basically we could have, you know, a box that had an extra autograph. We could have a box that was short an autograph. We could have a box where an autograph has been replaced by rewards points. And, of course, if we do find any rewards points, we will give those out using random.org. We will find inserts in here called round numbers. Most of you are probably familiar with it. It's been a staple of contenders for many years. But each of those cards will have two different teams on them. So they will be set aside as we find them. At the end of the break, I'll use random.org to award those. They'll either go to the team depicted on the left side of the card or the team on the right side of the card depending on how random does it. If we find any redemptions, they will be left... Uh, typically, I'm going to leave them face down, and we put them right over there in that little housekeeping area. And they hang out there until the very bitter end of the break. And then we flip them all over at once, find out who they are, then go to the Panini website, find out, uh, you know, verify our teams, and find out what they're going to be numbered to. So that's kind of how things are going to roll tonight. And we are off to the races. So lots of base cards, of course. You know, the base stuff we're going to kind of buzz through. 
Um, many of our inserts, after we see them the first time and you get accustomed to what they look like, we'll kind of buzz through a lot of those too. Minka Fitzpatrick and the Dolphins, our first autograph. That is our first round numbers that I had uh, spoken to you about earlier. So that's what that card looks like. Uh, legendary Contenders, just, whoops, I stacked that in the wrong place, is um, just an insert set that, again, we'll find plenty of. And a redemption right away, too. Huh, housekeeping area is going to be busy tonight, isn't it? We may as well just get that lined up right now. Rookie of the Year Contenders, that one had Saquon on it. We'll find uh, plenty of those, plenty of MVP Contenders uh, that we'll see throughout as well. Those little advertising cards, team quads. That's the majority of the inserts. We may see a couple more. Dolphins are going to hit again. Dolphins have our first two hits tonight, so Miami's off to a good start. And I'm not going to mess this up this time. <laughs> so yeah, this is supposed to represent apparently like a ticket stub or a torn ticket. That little ruffling there across the top. That is number to 46. It's Durham Smythe for the Dolphins. Like the first time I saw one, I'm thinking, what happened? They got it caught, you know, in the crimper. Because I have pulled cards before, mostly out of older series. But I've pulled stuff before where they really did catch it in the crimper. But then I'm thinking, well, why did none of the base cards have, have the edges caught? Just the hit. That's so weird, you know. <laughs> and then somebody came back like, 30 minutes later and said, no, it's supposed to be that way. I was like, oh. <laughs> I know, I know. I, it makes me look really stupid, yet I tell the story on myself again tonight. Why do I do it? I don't know. Why not? Why not, right? Hi, Donnie. How are you tonight? The Green Bay Packers have Joshua Jackson. That is our third autograph. Actually, it's our fourth because we have a redemption. So that is autograph four of five out of this box. We have a little championship ticket. That is numbered to 99, hollow foil, uh, Philip Rivers, who for sure isn't going to the championship this year because they stunk up the place today that was like unbelievably bad football for the chargers i mean just nothing like they had been playing up to this point i, I just don't know what happened to them it's like ghost of games past or something they've got a mental block maybe about tom brady i don't know jaleel scott and the ravens is our fifth and final autograph hit out of box number one here What part of the country are you in, Donnie? Did you get snow or anything this weekend? We did get a little, but you know what? It's all, It like went away really quickly. I said fifth and final, but it's not going to be. There's four. The redemption made five. Oh, guess what? There's number six. Ah, how you like that? For once, on average, plays in our favor, doesn't it? Because that is Auden Tate for the Bengals with a little extra love for us in this box with six autographs. Woohoo! This is the only round numbers that doesn't have to um, be given out by way of random because both of those guys go to the Raven. So it's the only one. You're in Dayton and you got seven and a half inches. Hoi! <laughs> Griffin, you got 10 inches. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, they talked like that we might get four inches or so. And we ended up getting. I would say, just by looking outside, inch, inch and a half, something like that. And it was all gone by the next day. It warmed up, it started melting, then it rained, and kind of dreary and rainy today, too. But all that stuff is pretty well, pretty well gone. I mean, it was gone off the road the next day really quickly, but now it's kind of gone off the grass and, and everywhere. I had to have a chapstick break. Sorry about that. Yeah, Thomas, we do have a redemption. It's sitting right up there uh, in the housekeeping area. As I mentioned a while ago when we were uh, in box number one, all of our redemptions stay right up there in that housekeeping area until the end of the break. We flip them all over at one time, and we find out uh, who they are. Then we go to the Panini website. We check out their teams. 
most of the time we're going to know their teams, but we go there to uh, verify them anyway. And we will also find out, of course, at that point, what, if anything, it's going to be numbered to. So there again, it sits right there throughout the break, along with any others we find. We'll go up there along with it. Round numbers. Those are the other cards in housekeeping. If you all missed, uh, missed that before, those also will be dealt with at the end of the break because they have two different teams on the same card. So we will use random.org to award them. So Donnie, you and Griffin are close to one another then, huh? Not, not, uh, not too far away from each other up there in Ohio. I haven't been up to the Dayton area in a while. I had a friend who lived in Springboro many years ago, um, and I used to go up there some to Springboro. But I haven't been up that way in a long time. Okay, we are in box number two right now. Of course, box number one, as I said, we got lucky and had six uh, hits in total. Five live and one redemption. We'll see if that keeps going for us. Numbered to 49, it's a rookie of the year contender uh, for Cortland Sutton and the Broncos. Numbered to 49, Baker Mayfield, rookie of the year contender. One to go to housekeeping. And so on and so forth. So, we don't have anything new coming out this next week apparently yeah some soccer product i think but of course i don't uh don't break soccer so we won't be getting anything new so we do have a 250 rewards point card that has replaced one of our hits i know i spoke about it earlier but just as a refresher here's what happens it also goes into the housekeeping area it will be given out at the end of the break using random.org and it probably means that somewhere along the way we will find ourselves, uh, in this case, having a, having a pretty good hit. Usually you do. If you have a rewards point card, it usually means you're going to have a nice hit somewhere along the way. Dante Pettis on a Rookie of the Year contender card to 99 for the 49ers. That one was, of course, on card. I guess, I mean, I think you guys can probably tell when they're on card versus sticker for the most part, but I'll try to remember to call it out as well. Next up is Josh Adams. That is for the Eagles. My poor Philadelphia Eagles. I really was kind of hoping they would win today, even though I do like the Saints as well. And the Saints are awfully good this year. I don't know. It's just something about the Nick Foles situation. Just, I always want him to do well. Here's our first cracked ice of the night. It goes out to the Buffalo Bills. It is Harrison Phillips, numbered to 24. Rookie ticket, cracked ice. But, of course, Nick Foles, it doesn't matter. He's still going to make his money. I mean, think about it. When he took over for... The injured Carson Wentz. I mean, it didn't even look like the Eagles were going to make the playoffs. And next thing you know, not only does he get them to the playoffs, he, you know, manages to to win and uh, get them get them almost there. I mean, getting them almost got there today. But Alshon Jeffrey, you know, that's going to haunt him. And he's usually so reliable too. I, I mean, ah, uh, that's going to haunt that guy for a while. Luke Falk and the Dolphins. Dolphins have had several hits already tonight. Another one to add to their pile. Griffin, do you have the 49ers tonight? You said go Niners. Do you have them tonight? I always forget. You have, I know you tell me all the time who your teams are, and 
I know I should remember it and I am the worst about it. I just, I can't, I can't keep them in my head. I try really hard and then I just can't. But I'm guessing you probably do have the 49ers. Of course, we pulled that Nick Mullins the other night. That was pretty cool. I was glad to see that come out. And some, One of you, might have been Stanglover, one of you looked up um, to see what those were going for, and they really were bringing some decent money. You're not wrong about that, Griffin. I mean, Jamon Moore was out of everything this year, wasn't he? I mean, Packers, well, first of all, the Packers in general, out of all the early season stuff, I mean, it would just be Packer, 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 Bronco, 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 Bronco. And then we got into some of the products later in the season, and things started evening out a little bit, but still a lot of Packers this year, a lot of Broncos uh, came out this year as well. So... For sure, I can see how if you had the Packers in the and a lot of breaks throughout the year, you're probably uh, loaded up on on Jamon Moore cards. That makes perfect sense. We have Trey Quinn and the Redskins. Donnie, you said you have uh, you have this year's Super Bowl champions, the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, the Rams looked like early season Rams, didn't they? I mean, after having kind of had a mid to late season, I don't know, slump is not the right word, but they certainly had a different look and feel to them than they had early in the year. And now they've come roaring back to the Rams we all know and love from the first of the year. Denzel Ward out for the Cleveland Browns. So, uh, yeah, I, I think everybody we've got right now, I think no matter who goes forward from here, we'll have an entertaining Super Bowl, I think. Kansas City Chiefs are on board with Dorian O'Daniel. Of course, it's almost like... Um, well, half the teams that played this year, it seems like we would have had a shootout if we'd had them. Just in general, offense was extremely productive all year. Yeah, I kind of at this point, I really think I would, I, I would like to see the Chiefs get to the Super Bowl. I really would, because I, I just love Patrick Mahomes. He's so much fun to watch. And he does some of the craziest stuff. <laughs> he makes some plays that you just think, how did he, how did he do that? It's fun to watch. So we'll see who we end up with, but uh, no matter where we go from here, I think, as I said, I think we'll have a fun, entertaining Super Bowl, and I'm not going to, my Steelers, of course, long since out of it, so I just want to see a good competitive game at this point. That is numbered to 175. It's Mike Evans, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, playoff ticket, hollow foil. This is uh, Contenders. It certainly is. This is Contenders uh, case break number two that ended on eBay tonight. Tony, you got it. Kansas City Chiefs hit again. Chase Litton for this one. Well, Gina, you're correct. Uh, the Patriots did look good today, but also didn't you think the Chargers also just looked bad? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yes, the Patriots for sure were very efficient, very good for what I saw of it. Um, but also the Chargers played uncharacteristically poorly. But it's all it's very hard to beat New England at home. But, you know, they got to travel to Kansas City for this. So 
our first acetate. We didn't hit one out of case number one, so I'm glad to see one come out finally. This one is Darius Geis. I want to find, um, hang on, this ought to work. Now we can see it a little better, a piece of white paper in behind it. So that is numbered to 10. It is a rookie ticket, of course, Darius Geis acetate for um, the Redskins. So very cool. I kind of I kind of complained in our first case because we didn't hit an acetate. I was really bummed. So I'm glad that we have one show up for us uh, here in case number two tonight. Donnie, I think you're right. Donnie types in that he thinks Pat Mahomes could throw a spiral standing on his head. I mean, I think you're just about right. The kid is just, I mean, he does some stuff that you just go, wait, what? Did he seriously just hit that throw? I mean, well, even Drew Brees said, you know, kid's incredible. He hits stuff. I He makes throws I couldn't make, you know, that type thing. So I think we're not the only ones who kind of find it fun to watch him I think some of the some of the guys in the league might agree with that as well it's fun to watch him do well Thomas yeah you know what Steelers gosh well of course we knew we knew what was going to happen with Le'Veon Bell and 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 now of course uh <laughs> We've got Antonio Brown on the way out the door. I don't think there's really any way to repair that at this point. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things he could have done and gotten away with. But as I said the other night, when he decided I'm not going to take any calls from Art Rooney and I'm not going to return any calls to Art Rooney, the man who's paying me, you know, $20 million a year or whatever it is with his bonuses and things. I, I think that pretty well sealed his fate. And, of course, you know, Rooney doesn't say a lot. And when he had that press conference the other day saying he can't really imagine any way that Antonio Brown would be on the team for spring training, I think. I mean, obviously he's sending a message to him, but I think that also speaks volumes about what's going to happen. So. so I think he is gone with the wind. I know they're hoping to get a first rounder for him. Which, I mean, hey, Oakland got a first-rounder for Amari Cooper. I don't know why we wouldn't be able to get a, a first-rounder for A.B. Might be the Raiders there sitting on a big pile of first-rounders. So, you never know. But, of course, you know, we got Juju Smith-Schuster back there. We, we need, you know, honestly, we need to get younger anyway. I, I do hate to see A.B. go, but he's caused a lot of problems along the way um in recent years and of course frankly we're gonna have to be moving on from ben before too long i know they're gonna probably extend him again but you know he's slowing down a little bit too and it, it was time for us to get younger i guess is the moral of the story we just got started a year too early numbered to 99 that is christopher herndon playoff ticket for the jets that is hollow foil so I just think, um, I think, yeah, that was around numbers. I think that the timetable just got moved up a little bit from, from what was going to be inevitable in a couple years anyway. So we'll see where it goes. Donnie, you said Pat Mahomes could turn you into a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Well, he kind of has for me. I mean, I like watching the kid play. Now, honest, obviously, anytime my Steelers play somebody, I'm always going to want my Steelers to win. But outside of when the Steelers play, I enjoy watching a lot of other teams, and they are definitely one of them. DJ Chark, that is an on-card for the Jags. But I've enjoyed watching a number of the young quarterbacks this year. Lamar Jackson, which, of course the dreaded division rivals um, for my Steelers, but I've enjoyed watching Lamar play. I really have enjoyed watching the Baker Mayfield and the new additions to the Browns, another dreaded AFC North rival, but you know what? They've been fun to watch. I think Sam Darnold, when they get, if they get him a little bit of help, which I think they will and they should, 
I think Sam Darnold's going to be kind of fun to watch next year, too. So, Well, Donnie, you said Mason Rudolph's not too bad. We haven't really gotten a look at him, so I don't know. Um, he did not beat Josh Dobbs out for the backup quarterback spot, and that's all I can tell you for sure is he was, you know, number three on the depth chart there. But, I mean, I think he looks like he'll be good, but I don't know. You never know till you get them in, get them out there. This is for the Seahawks. Will Disley. You know, plus, of course, I thought Josh Dobbs would would be farther along in his development than he is too. So I might just be the might just be a bad judge <laughs> of uh, you know quarterback talent for in regard to the Steelers. I don't know. Terrell Suggs to 175 hollow foil for the Ravens. For the 49ers, we have, who is that? DJ Reed. But all those guys make, make a leap every year. Those young guys, I mean, they all pretty much get better from year one to two and two to three and even the ones who are maybe not playing live game action right now just getting the the extra practices and reps and spring trainings and things will help them second redemption guys so we have two up there in housekeeping at the moment donnie you watched uh, big ben play uh at miami of ohio huh well, Griffin, <laughs> I Griffin says, don't I like uh, watching, he calls the Bengals the Bungles. Don't I like watching the Bungles? Um, you know what? They haven't had anybody that's really piqued my interest lately. <laughs> so I will confess to you that I watch very little Cincinnati Bengals football at this point in time. Which is kind of crazy because that's what I always get in my market. Because by, purely by distance, they're the closest NFL team to me at, what, an hour, hour and a half away, something like that. And so we get all their stupid games in my market. And I'm like, oh, I, I'd rather watch the Browns, at least this year. I'd rather watch the Browns, but I always get the Bengals, so I don't know. But I'm sure that will change, too. I mean, they're going to have... Have the new coach uh, from the Rams, right? They got the, the OC from the Rams. Uh, well, they haven't done it yet because the Rams are still in the playoffs. But that's the deal, right? That they're after have a deal tentatively with that guy. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of changes. And they'll probably become fun to watch again. But they have not been recently. <laughs> Greg's just a fan of anybody that beats Tom Brady. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he typed in. <laughs> oh, I know, Greg. You do hate Tom Brady an awful lot. What about the rest of the Patriots, though? Are you okay with the rest of the team? It's literally just Tom Brady that you don't like? <laughs> or is it the whole team and you just kind of kind of uh, shorthand it by, by making it about Tom? Well, Travis, who would we draft, though? Travis is saying he thinks the Steelers will draft a quarterback to replace Ben. But, like, who would it be? This isn't a very good quarterback draft, so who who would they even get? I, I, don't, I don't see anybody. I don't see us taking anybody quarterback-wise first round. First of all, we need somebody, uh, like a bunch of somebodies on defense that we need to take out of the first round and the second and the third. And we haven't, you know, really, I don't see anybody falling in the late rounds for quarterbacks that we would want to take. Roquan Smith and the Bears. At least not that I'm thinking of right now. I'm thinking you would probably be better off grooming Mason Rudolph than taking somebody out of this year. That's what I think. Trenton Cannon and the Jets. 
Oh, James Conner's been great. Yeah, I mean, and finally, towards the end of the season, Jalen Samuel started getting a little more field time and started to show some of the diverse things that he can do. I was a fan of Jalen Samuels right after the fact. I kind of thought he would be the sleeper guy this year, and then he doesn't, you know, really show out until the end of the season. But I think he'll make a leap next year, too. Numbered to 75, we have a round numbers like the rest of our round numbers. It will be awarded uh, using random. It will go to either the team on the left-hand side of the card or the team on the right-hand side of the card. Uh, and we'll use random to figure that out at the end of the break. But I don't know. I mean, Steelers will be fine. They'll be fine. They just, you know, need to need to do a little a little work in the off season. I tell you who I would like to get as a free agent. Zadarius Smith, another UK guy, edge rusher kind of guy. Maybe not much as, uh, well, kind of, kind of almost like Bud Dupree. Um, and they played together at UK. And honestly, I think Zadarius Smith has probably pay, played a little better than Bud up to this point. Obviously, Steelers drafted Bud. And uh, Zadarius, I forgot who drafted him, but anyway, he got traded to the Ravens, and that's where he's been recently. But he's getting ready to hit free agency, and I'd like to see us pick him up put him uh, out there. Jordan Thomas, rookie ticket for the Texans. But we don't usually spend big in free agency. The Steelers don't, so we usually don't have any money. <laughs> we have no cap space normally, but we will have this year. A third redemption. Got quite a pile going over there now. Speaking of the Bengals, there is, uh, I think that is going to be Sam Hubbard. Let's get him up here and check him out. Yes, that is, in fact, Sam Hubbard and the Cincinnati Bengals. Thomas, you said the Browns will be 10 and 6 next year, you think? Well, that is definitely possible. I really kind of, I liked them going into this year. I thought they would win six, seven games this year. And then, of course, they started out just disastrously until we, they got rid of Hugh. And then once that happened, they got themselves kind of tracked and, and going and finished up the season nicely. So, I, I could definitely see that. 10 and 6 next year. I mean, they've got a nice young core there. I think the question will be, you know, you've got Freddie Kitchens going in as a first-time head coach, and then they fired just virtually everyone else, including Greg Williams, which made no sense to me. But anyway, so you are going to have a lot of new personnel and a first-time head coach. So assuming that they don't mess anything up uh, I would see I, I could see them doing that Greg you said you think you said Tom Brady refuses to shake people's hands when he loses <laughs> well I don't I don't know about that um, I, I you know what I don't usually watch enough Patriots games to tell you about that, but I'll take your word for it. If you've seen that happen, I don't don't uh, dispute you on it. Oh, Sony Michelle is good for sure. Yeah, Sony Michelle actually is should be quite good. He was injured earlier this year, but I mean, I think when he's been available to them, he has been getting better and better. Hina, you get the Bills or the Jets as your home games well I think the Jets again I think the Jets are going to be fun to watch next year with Sam Darnold and really your bills might not be too bad either you just got to get Josh Allen on track um Josh Allen from UK is excellent he is an edge uh, an edge guy he was good 
his junior year at UK, but he decided he could have been drafted, but he would have been lower in one of the lower rounds, you know, like mid, one of the middle rounds. He decided to come back, play his senior year. He played lights out. Um, yeah, I mean, they're saying he may go as high as, as number two, um, but he's definitely going to go in the top five, and the kid is fantastic. If you've never seen him play, you'll have to check him out in the Senior Bowl. Mike Boone for the Vikings, and once again, there's your kind of scalloped edge, whatever you want to call that. It's meant to represent a torn ticket or a ticket stub type uh, deal. But yes, Josh Allen is fantastic player and just a really good kid all the way around. A really good kid. And I would love to see him go number one overall, but I don't guess he's going to. I mean, everybody's been so tied into Nick Bosa for so long. I think Josh probably could could make it to number one but he would have to really have an exceptional senior bowl and an exceptional combine and Nick Bosa would probably have to do a little worse than expected at the combine that is Leighton Van Der Esch the wolf nice hat nice hit for uh, the Cowboys and I happen to see sitting on top of the other stack our next hit so we just grabbed it too that is Dylan Cantrell and the Chargers Um, you said, uh, you think that, that Josh Allen's going to go number three to the Jets. You know, people have been saying that some people have been, uh, and then there was kind of, uh, recently some had moved him up into the number two spot. I don't think anybody had moved him up into the, into the number one spot. That's why. And I, and I don't know that he'll be able to unseat Nick Bosa. I really don't. That's to 99 for the Chargers, Philip Rivers, hollow foil. And if Nick Bosa hadn't been hurt and virtually not play his senior year, then I don't think there would be any anybody anywhere you know, dethroning him. But since he did end up getting hurt and then maybe could have come back for the later part of the season, elected not to and thought it would be better to you know do his draft prep and stuff he's probably right might give you a little bit of a window for Josh to sneak in there but it, it would he will really have to show out to do it I think Chase Litton Kansas City Chiefs but either way um, he should be he should be good Josh Allen should be good at the next level and he works hard and he's just a really good kid and I hope uh I hope he goes into a good situation. I don't want him to get drafted somewhere, some like horrible place. <laughs> Not that any place would be horrible, but you know what I mean. There are better situations and worse situations. I hope he gets drafted into a better situation. <laughs> Traquan Smith and the Saints. That is an on-card autograph coming out for Nolans. I have to say, the defense today did really look good for New Orleans. It, they, they're going to be, we knew they were going to be hard to beat, but they really are going to be hard to beat. Greg, I don't know if Josh Allen will have signed cards. It, you never really know what Panini is going to do in that regard. Here's kind of, here's a kind of a road map of what you can expect, especially for early season Panini products. They're going to be mostly, not entirely, but there'll be a lot of stuff in there from the players that are invited to the rookie premiere. And the players that are invited to the rookie premiere, it's my understanding, are invited by the Players Association. The NFL Players Association has a either all or most of the input as to who is invited to the premiere. And typically, historically, you find it full of players on offense, not a lot of players from the defensive side of the ball. Now, obviously, when they're highly drafted, you're more likely to find them in there. 
But still, the majority of your autographs in early season products are going to be those guys that are that are in that uh, rookie premiere day. Or it's actually several days, but that's where most of them will come from. But of course, now the collegiate products that will come out first, which it looks like this year, I believe, Prism Draft Picks is going to be the first 2019 product we see. And it'll be, of course, Collegiate Prism Draft. So you'll probably find them in there, because that'll be pre-draft anyway. But they're going to have, I'm sure they're going to try to get signatures from just about anybody who they expect to be to be draft, highly drafted. And again, you know, anybody they expect to do well I would expect that Josh would be in that product in some of the early season ones. And then after that, it's anybody's guess to see from there. But, I mean, we did see Denzel Ward, of course, plenty this year. And so I think there's definitely a possibility. And we saw some, some T.J. Watt, you know, last year. So they, they're getting a little better about getting rookies in from the, from the defensive side of the ball. For the Seahawks, it is Alex McGough. Some love for the Seattle Seahawks. Hang on now. Somebody tried to slide in behind Vaughn Miller, and it was Robbie Anderson. A hollow foil, Sean Lee, Dallas Cowboys, numbered to 99 championship ticket. But I believe that they are saying right now that UK, University of Kentucky, could have the, the third most players drafted, counting all the rounds, entirely in this upcoming year. Can you even imagine? So, like, you know, Alabama up there at probably number one and, you know, Clemson or somebody at, at number two. And can you imagine if it really does end up being the University of Kentucky with the third most drafted players out of out of uh, the upcoming draft, 2019 draft? But it is a good group that is leaving us. I think the majority of them have been invited to the Combine, so that's always a good sign as well. Sam Hubbard. Comes out again for the Bengals. Yeah, Greg, we haven't seen any Kalen Balage or Jamon Moore tonight, have we? We have seen a lot of Dolphins, but yeah, none of them were Balage, I don't think. And you're right, I don't think we've seen Jamon Moore yet either. You have Jordan Thomas for the Houston Texans. So, I mean, for sure, Panini does sometimes go out. I mean, they definitely are going to have autographs outside of just the players that are at the NFL, you know, rookie premiere. I'm just saying that a lot of the players that are at the rookie premiere are the ones that you will see the most frequently in the early products. The reason for that is because they get those guys to sign all that stuff while they are there. Jair Alexander, Green Bay Packers. So, you know, they'll have the cards, or get, get pictures of them in their uniforms that week, and then they, you know, run around and get cards printed and such and, and get a lot of stuff signed by them. And then there's another event, like midway through the season, another redemption, where you tend to uh, see those guys again, and they'll get another big group of stuff autographed at that point in time, usually. So right now we have four redemptions. And one points card, and then our stack of round numbers. Yeah, I think, again, I think they just picked them kind of based on draft position. And, again, those that, you know, are invited to the, to the rookie premiere and that sort of thing. And, of course, they're always going to focus on the skilled positions, if you will. So they're going to go deep in and take people, quarterbacks that might be drafted anywhere in the first on the first day. They would likely approach them and 
kind of, I think, like anybody else does. They look at the draft board, I imagine, and think, hey, <laughs> let's go for this one. That sort of deal. And then as the season goes on, of course, people are added and subtracted and whatnot. A la Philip Lindsay, you know, showing up, but not until, what, Playbook? Playbook, our first Philip Lindsay? Maybe. Like Nick Mullins, not showing up until here in Contenders. I mean, you know, sometimes you have these mid-season or late-season guys start to break out, and these cards and things are printed and autographs are done way in advance. So, it takes a while to get them worked in when that happens. Yeah, I mean, you know, Greg, I don't know beyond beyond what I what I already shared with you guys. I don't have any idea beyond that how they would choose them other than, you know, again, they tend to look for the offensive side of the ball. They tend to get the the guys out of the rookie premier and your skilled position players, obviously they go way deeper into the draft for those guys. Quarterbacks and your wide receivers and things like that. So, but I don't, I don't know if they have any specific magic formula. I just know that's usually how we can kind of, kind of plan on what you're going to see or using those types of parameters. For the Bills, you have Ray Ray McLeod for Buffalo. The next time I talk to my rep who used to work for Upper Deck, I will ask him if he has any further insight into how some of those processes work. He may know. He, he probably knows a lot of stuff that uh, I don't know about that. So I'll hit him up next time I talk to him. That is McFadden for the 49ers. He's always got good, useful information about how decisions are made and things work on the other side of the of the business we have a playoff ticket for the bills it's zay jones numbered to 175 hollow foil for the buffalo bills I mean, he's the one who told me about the pay scale, too. Like, how, how these guys are, like, estimates of how much these rookies get paid to sign things and the great disparity in the prices that you have to pay the top X number of picks versus the lower number of picks, which is why you see so many more of the, <laughs> of the lower round picks than you do the higher round picks. Carlton Davis, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because, you know, it costs them less money and stuff so to do it. So that's uh, how that part of that works out. But it is interesting to hear him talk about how some of that stuff works. Naheem Hines for the Colts. That one is a nice little on-card, hard-signed autograph. And... We are, after we finish this box, we've got four left to go. So once we get through this one, we'll be eight down, four to go. Not too bad. Making a dent in it anyway. Here comes a Patriot. And our Patriot is Braxton Berrios rookie ticket. And the Jags have a hit with Tanner Lee. I still say the Jags are probably most likely to end up with Joe Flacco. Because, like, where else is he really going to go? I mean, there's, there's not that many places where he's going to go that he would want to go that they would want him to go. I say he ends up signing, like, a, a one- or two-year deal with Jacksonville. And Blake Bortles will go somewhere as somebody's backup quarterback.
And then, of course, you're going to have, as Greg keeps saying, he's and, and I'm sure he's right, they're not going to be able to keep Nick Foles in Philly anymore, I don't imagine. I mean, I think he was, what, $20 million this year to be there as a backup, but he had a lot of incentives built into his contract. Um, maybe it wasn't $20 million, but I don't remember what it was for this year, but whatever it was, I remember he had a lot of incentives built in. And then because he started X number of games, he got a bunch more money. And because he, every playoff game he won, he got a bunch more money. And, and he wanted to stay there, I think. But I do believe that next year he's, I think you're right, Greg. I think he's going to be in demand and he's going to get a lot of offers. And I don't think Philadelphia will be able to afford to keep him unless he just decides, hey, I want to be here and get a hometown discount or something like that, which is always possible. I don't know. I don't know where he could go, though. I, I don't know. I, I mean, there's lots of possibilities for him. But as far as where he would be leaning or whatever, I wouldn't have any idea. Oh, it's a player option next year? Well, he might exercise it then if it's a player option. So, you never know. I mean, he seems to like playing there, so he could do it. I think the Dolphins will probably move on from Tannehill. And you know the Jags are moving on from Bortles and they don't really have anybody else in place. And don't know yet what will happen with the Redskins. Uh, I mean, that gruesome injury to Alex Smith certainly makes you think they might end up being in the market for somebody, but hard to say. I would assume the Ravens would, what, keep RG3 to back up Lamar Jackson, maybe? I bet you don't know that either, really. I know they're not going to keep Flacco, though. He's not going to sit on the bench and back up Lamar Jackson next year. Chris Warren and the Raiders. Nor do I think the Ravens would want him to anyway. But it'll be interesting. It's always a, it's always a, always a carousel in the offseason coaches and quarterbacks and such. Whoops. But you know, you got to figure some of these guys, not just Tom Brady, but, you know, Philip Rivers is going to be coming close. He's not to the end yet, but he's getting close. Big Ben's getting close. I mean, there's going to be a lot of changing of the guard here in the next few years. So here you have another little, uh, whatever you want to call this, torn ticket, ticket stub, whatever we'd like to call it. It is for Jalen Holmes and the Vikings, numbered to 92, his jersey number. So another, I think that's our third, isn't it, torn ticket, maybe? Something like that. Then we have the Dolphins, Minka Fitzpatrick. I think that is your second Minka and several hits in here for the Dolphins tonight. I've lost count, but a bunch anyway. Raiders come out again. Colton Miller. And see, that's another interesting situation because I'm not really sure that Gruden is all that sold on Derek Carr. So I wouldn't be 100% surprised to see the Raiders move on from Derek Carr if they can make some kind of a deal for somebody that uh, Gruden likes better. And if Derek Carr became available, well, then you got a whole nother set of circumstances. That is to 99, Larry Fitzgerald and the Cardinals. For the Green Bay Packers, it is somebody we don't see very often. Jake, I don't even know how to pronounce that. C Kumaro? 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 I don't know. Anyway, we don't pull him very much, but there he is for the Green Bay Packers. That's why we like contenders. You find all kinds of guys you don't find anywhere else, and a lot of times they're short prints when you find guys that you don't find anywhere else. So that might turn out to be... A short print, you know, Panini often doesn't 
release the list of them until after the fact, sometimes way after the fact. Ooh, we got another acetate. Second one out of this out of uh, this case. Yay. Let's get my little white. Let me get my little white sheet back. It's Edo Smith to 10 for the Falcons. So we're kind of making up ground for the fact that we had no acetates in case number one. We've got a pair of them so far here in case number two. And we've got loads more contenders. We've got plenty, plenty more cases of contenders. We'll be opening this for a few weeks off and on. Obviously not every single night, but off and on for a few weeks. And I'm trying to find just a little more because I didn't get quite as much as I asked. Well, I never get as much as I asked for, but I didn't get quite as much as I wanted either. So if I can round us up any additional contenders that's not a million trillion dollars, we, you know, might even pick up a few more cases beyond what, what I've got stashed right now. We'll see how it shakes out. And I thought I had more Leaf Best of Football coming. I mean, I do have, I have four cases. Well, we've opened two of them. I've got two more. But I had ordered uh, another handful of cases that I thought were shipping out on Friday. And then I got an email, I guess came in yesterday and see it till today. They said, oh, yeah, we really only have one case left. So I'm thinking, all right, well, they'll just refund me for the others. And then, like, I don't know, half hour later after that, they're like, oh, yeah, we don't even have the one case. We just have some loose boxes. I was like, what? How do you, like, what happened to your inventory control here? So that kind of went up in smoke. So I'll have to, I'll have to hunt those down again, I guess. And I usually order a little more Leaf Best of Football than I did this year, but I don't know why I didn't. But at any rate, we know we've got the four cases, and uh, hopefully we'll find a few more. A playoff ticket for Alex Smith, numbered to 175 for the Redskins. I haven't heard an update on him in a while. Have any of you? I mean, obviously he had the surgery. I think he had some kind of complication after surgery. I don't know if it was infection or what, but I think there was some kind of a, a little bit of a setback after surgery, and I don't know what from there on that leg. And Riley McCarron for the Patriots. New England Patriots. Eagles, Josh Sweat, of course, you know, what are the Vikings going to do too, by the way? I mean, I guess nothing because all of that, all of that massive contract for Kirk Cousins was guaranteed, wasn't it? I mean, I think the thing was fully guaranteed, which is, I mean, everybody said when they did it, what are you thinking? It seemed crazy. And considering how their season went this year, yeah, I'd say they're feeling a little bit unhappy right now in Minnesota with their situation. Kurt Benkert and the Falcons. But I, I mean, there's no way anybody else takes on that contract with that kind of guaranteed money attached to it. And I think they're just, they're, they're stuck. I mean, that's just, <laughs> for better or for worse, Kirk Cousins is just going to be their quarterback for a while. Well, this is about to make somebody happy. This probably is why we got our rewards point card. We pulled him out of case number one. Guess what? We've got him again in case number two. Mr. Baker Mayfield coming out for the Browns with a nice hit. And if we find Saquon in here, then we'd really be all set. As he was another uh, case one hit. I'd like to find him again here in case two as well. 
But I'm glad to see, of course, Baker come out. And the Cowboys, Dorrance Armstrong Jr. Greg, you said Alex Smith got out of the hospital, but you haven't heard any updates, I guess, since then. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know how what what the expectation is in regard to his ability to return, but that was a really bad injury. And then, of course, you know, you've got Teddy Bridgewater to do something with too, because Teddy, I mean, he's just sitting down there backing up right now in New Orleans, and. He's going to, his, his deal's going to expire, I think, right? He's going to be a free agent. So you have to figure somebody who needs a quarterback's probably going to go after him too. So I don't know that it's a terrible thing that it's not a great quarterback draft because honestly, you're not going to have that many places to go anyway. I mean, there's always a place for him to go, but no immediate starters if we end up with all these other guys uh, on the loose. Especially Derek Carr. My little kitten is over there doing something really weird. She's not a kitten so much anymore. I mean, you guys probably remember him. He's, he's crazy. He's the one I found, uh, I don't know, we found him outside, what, last? October or November, so he's, you know, he's over a year old now, but he's still, he's like the Tasmanian devil. He's just kind of everywhere and into everything all the time, and he's just like a little blur when he goes by, and he's over there. I don't really know what he's doing. <laughs> he's, he's kind of uh, amusing himself, but like chasing his tail almost. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but he's he's over here acting kind of crazy. Sometimes he comes and jumps in the wrappers, but he doesn't seem to be of a mind to do that tonight. It's probably a good thing because it is really noisy when he does it, but... And there for a while, he would always get that little toy that makes noise that squeaks. And he would play with that during our breaks. Some of you probably remember that. Because it would, I don't know if you could hear it every time, but I think you could hear it some of the times, depending on where he had carried it in the house. But he hadn't done that in a while, so he's calmed down a little, I guess. Kansas City Chiefs, my goodness, that's like your third Chase Litton, isn't it? It's a lot, anyway. It's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of Chase Littons. So you've got one to keep, one to give away, one to sell. <laughs> An abundance of them. Wallpaper, your room with them. Cam Sims and the Redskins. You think they're going to keep Teddy Bridgewater in New Orleans? Well, I guess maybe, but I'd be kind of surprised if they did. I guess you never know, though. The Dallas Cowboys, Cedric Wilson, Jr. Who knows? It'll all shake out in some interesting way. Meanwhile, I still just want to know where where are we going to end up with Manny Machado and Bryce Harper? Everybody's been waiting on that. It's really dragging out longer than I thought it would. That is numbered to 75, also with two teams on it going up there into the TBA area. Or actually TBD, I guess. To be determined. And then we'll sort it out uh, shortly. Oh, all my screens keep trying to time out one right after the other there. 
And we have another little hit here for the Browns. And that one is Nick Chubb on a playoff ticket numbered to 49. So the Browns uh, with a couple of nice rookie hits with your Baker Mayfield and then the Nick Chubb to 49. Not, not too shabby for Cleveland. And Seahawks again. This one, Rasheem Green. No Rashad Penny, though, yet for the Seahawks, I don't think, right? We had McGough and then that one. All right, last box mojo. We got to work it. We got to bring it, kids. Let's pull the fire, pull the heat. Let's see what we can find here in the last box of case number two. So we can bring it home in a big way here, hopefully. And then, of course, uh, immediately following this final box, I will flip over all of those redemptions. Then we'll go to the Panini website, verify the teams, and uh, find out what those are going to be numbered to. After we do the redemptions, uh, is that another points card? Yes, after we do the redemptions, we'll do our points cards. We now have two of those. And then after we do our points cards, which we will award using random.org, then we'll do that stack of round numbers cards. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of how things are going to roll. After we do the round numbers, we will recap. So that's the general order that things are going to go in here in the next few minutes as soon as we finish up our 12th and final box out of this case. They need to put a little notch on these wrappers so you can just grab them at the top and whoosh, you know? <laughs> Which you can do with Topps wrappers, but I can't ever do it with Panini wrappers. Not every Topps wrapper will do it, but a lot of them will, where you can just kind of grab it in one spot up there at the top and give it a little yank, and it'll pull the thing the whole way down. You don't have to pull it apart at the seams. But Paninis, I've never been able to get to do that. I'd love it if they'd put like a little notch where you could speed up the process of getting them out of the wrappers. Not a notch to make it easier. It's obviously easy to begin with. I'm saying to make it faster. Because they do love to put in millions of packs. <laughs> they do like to keep us busy opening lots of packs. Over there at Panini. Steelers. You were about to give up on the Pittsburgh Steelers, weren't you? You didn't think you were going to take anything home, but we do manage to find you a James Washington card here in the last box. And that one is hard signed for the Pittsburgh Steelers with James Washington. Another round numbers. Now, I would think if we don't find another what I'd call kind of big hit here in this last box, then I would think we might have a decent hit. Well, I mean, they're all decent, but I would think we might have a more high-profile hit maybe up there if we don't have another one in here because we did have the second points card come out. We have another Cracked Ice Dante Jackson to 24 Carolina Panthers. And the Green Bay Packers hit again uh, with the guy that I said I don't see very often. Guess what? <laughs> we're gonna we're going to see him twice right here in a row. Jake Cumeron, Cumeron. I don't really know how to pronounce his name. I don't think I've ever heard his name pronounced. Sometimes I hear them and I still don't know them. And I pronounce them incorrectly. Him, I've never even heard that I can think of. Anyway. Round numbers. 
a Buffalo Bill hit for Tremaine Edmonds. That's a nice uh, hit. Your round one drafty. The Raiders. Jordy Nelson championship ticket number 299. No Super Bowl ticket yet tonight, unless it's in this last little stack. Gonna mess up our streak of one of ones, isn't it? Although I guess we got one earlier in Leaf Ultimate Draft Baseball, but... Alright, that is the last of our live autographs anyway. So now, we're gonna flip over these redemptions and see who we can make happy out of these four things. So once again, we'll flip them. We're probably going to know the teams. We will still travel to the Panini website to find out what the teams are and what each of these is numbered to. And then, of course, after that, we'll deal with giving away our points cards, award our round number cards, and all of that stuff. So first up, it is Derwin James. That's a nice one. And that is Rookie Playoff Ticket, Rookie Playoff Ticket Variation. Oh, well, how about that? Derwin James is a Charger. Second up, Derwin James again. Well, imagine that and the Rookie Ticket. Um, <laughs> so you have two for the Chargers. One's a Rookie Ticket, one's a Variation. Actually, one is a playoff ticket variation. And then you have uh, Kiki, Kiki QT for the Texans. That is rookie ticket RPS card set. And the fourth one, Cortland Sutton, rookie ticket variation RPS for the Broncos. So right at the bitter end, we rewarded you for uh, picking up those Broncos, but it took us a while to get you there, didn't it? <laughs> so yes, thank you again for picking those up, Jordan. At least we have found you something out of there that we can, that, uh, you know, fate or karma or the breaking gods or however you want to call it, uh, rewarded you for picking that team up. So thank you again for that. I do appreciate it. So now, let's get over here and uh, find out what we need to know about all these. Let's look up Kiki first. That is Rookie Ticket RPS card set. I better make sure I brought you with me. Okay, I did. Sometimes I go to the page and then I forget to switch your view. But I didn't do that this time, so good. Rookie Ticket RPS, where are you? There we go. Card number 128. Right there is Kiki. Of course, Texans, as we expected, you can see there's no numbering over there. So that just means it is an open, unnumbered edition. We have another rookie ticket RPS, didn't we? No, our other one's a variation. Uh, and then we've got a Derwin James rookie ticket. So, um, but... I don't think he's going to be in this list, is he? No. All right, so now we just need to go to straight up rookie ticket. Should be number one, card number 152 should be Derwin James. And there he is as a charger, also an open edition. So that one all nice and verified. Now we're looking for rookie playoff ticket variation. That's also going to be Derwin James, which we know is a Charger, but let's go find out what it's going to be uh, numbered to anyway. He's card number 252 in this, and it looks like it's going to be numbered to 99 on this one. And then finally, we've got our Cortland Sutton for the Broncos Rookie Ticket Variation RPS. So we got to go back up here one more time. Rookie ticket variation RPS. Where is that? Uh, 
And Cortland Sutton is card number 115. Open edition again, so no numbering on that one either. Okay, so that takes care of the redemptions. Now, let's do this. We're going to be over here in random.org here in a second. Since I'm just right near there, we're going to go ahead and get that part set up. Then I'm going to go back to our spreadsheet. And this is to award the rewards points, okay? And we have two of them. They're both in the same point value of 250 points a piece. So I'm going to paste into random.org all 32 teams. I'll scroll down through it so you can see that all 32 teams were copied and pasted in here. Because we have uh, 10 or more items in our list, I'm going to hit random one single time. Then the first two teams that come up, team number one and team number two, after I randomize, will each get one of the 250 rewards points cards. So good luck, everyone. And it gives us the Patriots and the Giants, okay? So Patriots and Giants are going to get our um, rewards points. So let me get... Uh, Ah, ran right into that stack. Let me get these labeled up. I'm going to put them in a sleeve so I can write on them. So Patriots get one. The Giants are going to get the other one. Next, we got one more little bit of housekeeping to do before we recap, and that is these, our round numbers cards. So as you can see, it's two different teams on the card. So what I will do is go back to random. I'm going to bring you along with me. I'll type in left side, right side, because we have uh, fewer than 10 items in our list. I will be hitting random three different times. The first two times will not count. It will be only the third random that will determine where that's going to go. After we do that, we'll look through that little stack so you'll be able to see what might be coming your way. All right, so ignore the first one. You can ignore the second one. Here's our third and final. Comes up to the right side of the card. There you see three times, our date and time stamp and all that. All that happy jazz. And now I forgot what it said. Did it say right? <laughs> no. Now i got to go back and look. Yes, right side of the card. Okay, so let me put one of these uh, right here. And I'm putting it in a sleeve so that I can uh, circle it. Um, obviously, I'm not going to, you know, write on a card. I think everybody would know that, but just in case. So all of these are going to the team on the right-hand side of the card. So we start out Redskins. You've got uh, Broncos, Packers, Bears, Packers. Bears get uh, the numbered card there. The Bills, Cardinals, Charger, Dolphin, Jag, Bronco, Patriot, Charger. That got just stacked in there incorrectly. That's a regular one. Redskins, Dolphins, Falcons, Saints, Jags, Saints, Saints, Bucks, Bengals, Broncos, Cardinals, Packers, Jags, Chargers, upside down, Falcon, Dolphin, this numbered card here ends up going to the Broncos, Niners, Jets, Packer, Bill, Jag, Falcon, Dolphin, Saint, Falcon, Bingo, Saint, Packer, Buck. Okay, so that's how those go. Now, we finally have all of our housekeeping out of the way. It is time to recap. These are the numbered cards that are not signed. Raiders to 99, the Redskins to 175, the Cardinals to 99, to 175, the Bills numbered to 99, the Cowboys 99 for the Chargers, 175 for the Ravens, 175 for the Buccaneers, to 49 for the Broncos, and then numbered to 99, the Chargers. So those are all of our numbered cards that were not autographed. Now, our points. 250 points went to the Patriots. 250 points went to the Giants. Used random.org to accomplish that. 
Our Redemptions, Cortland Sutton, Open Edition Unnumbered for the Broncos, a Derwin James to 99 for the Chargers, another Derwin James for the Chargers, Open Edition Unnumbered, and Kiki for the Texans, Open Edition Unnumbered. And here comes the rest of our hits. So you have Bills, Packers, Steelers, Raiders, Dolphins. Uh, that one is one of the ticket stub variations. Vikings, Raiders, Jags, Patriot, Colt, Buccaneers, the Niners, the Bills, the Packers, Texans, Bengals, Seahawks, Saints, Chiefs, Chargers, Cowboys, Vikings with another uh, ticket stub variation there. Bengals, Texans, Jets, and Bears. A cracked ice for the Carolina Panthers to 24. Seahawks, a playoff ticket numbered to 49 for Nick Chubb and the Browns. Then you have the Cowboys, Redskins, Chiefs, Cowboys. There's that nice Baker Mayfield for the Browns. Falcons, Eagles, Patriots, one of a couple of acetate cards that we pulled out of here. I'm just putting something white behind it to make it show up a little better. That is numbered to 10, Edo Smith. The Packers, the 49ers, Seahawks, Jags, the Jets with a playoff ticket numbered to 99. Our second acetate that came out of this case is Darius Geis, numbered to 10, with uh, an acetate rookie ticket. Kansas City Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs, the Browns, the Redskins, the Dolphins, a cracked ice to 24 for the Bills, the Eagles, the 49ers with a Dante Pettis Rookie of the Year contender, Bengals, Ravens, Packers, the Dolphins get a ticket stub variation with Durham Smythe, and then one more for the Dolphins. So that is our recap for tonight, and I guess, yeah, that's pretty much everything. I will, of course, put up all this uh, spreadsheet information. It looks like I hit the camera at some point. I will put up the spreadsheet information one more time for anybody who might have missed it earlier, so you can have a look at the anticipated shipping dates as well as information about our breaks that are coming up in the days ahead, should you feel so inclined to want to join us again, which I hope that you do. So we have um, an anticipated shipping date of Thursday for our Ultimate Draft and Contenders Football. Uh, those both paid shipping breaks, of course. Every team pulled plenty of cards in Contenders. If you happen to get skunked in Ultimate Draft Baseball, and your team didn't pull anything, then your consolation card would ship with the rest of the break. For our mini helmets that were the first thing broken tonight, those were um, a free shipping break. Anytime I do free shipping breaks, they're typically going to be projected to go out somewhere in the neighborhood of a week after the break, although they are often sent sooner. It should be on the way to you no later than Saturday the 19th. And if you got skunked in the mini helmet break, Normally, I would just hold on to your consolation card. I do keep track of it for a rolling 90 days, and I send it the next time you have a package heading out, simply because it's a free shipping break. But if you don't want to wait for your next package and you'd like it sent right away, all you need to do is send me a note, let me know, and I will be happy to do that for you. So looking right now at what's coming up in the days ahead, this stuff is already listed on eBay. You can jump in there and bid on any of this right now if you wanted to. And it's what we'll be breaking for the next five days. Tomorrow night, Leaf Best of Football, Dominion Basketball, and Bowman's Best Baseball, all by the full case. On Tuesday night, we'll do an autographed batting helmet double header from Hip Parade, which means we'll have an autographed full size and an autographed mini batting helmet in the same box. We'll do uh, a, a pair of Gold Rush uh, autographed mini football helmets combined for one break. A Leaf autographed football jersey and another case of contenders on Tuesday night. Wednesday night, we'll do Ultimate Draft Baseball again, Leaf Best of Football again as well. Thursday, we'll find us doing Dominion Basketball, and we will do Prism Basketball Retail, a half case of the retail, which is 10 boxes. I believe it's one autograph per box. There are, of course, retail variations in there. And the Silver Prisms, which are the things we're probably the most uh, hopeful of finding. Uh, there will be should be plenty of those in that as well. 
On Friday night, we'll break a half case of Leaf Autograph Mini Helmets. So we've been doing TriStar here for the last couple of weeks. We're going to switch back into Leaf Mini Helmets starting Friday night. And we will do an eighth case of Optic Football, which will be the final case that we do of Optic. I don't have any more of that beyond what we break on Friday night. So that's what we look like in the days ahead. And I think that's all the news to use for tonight. So... Once again, thanks everyone for joining me. I appreciate you spending part of your Sunday night with me. I hope that you have a great week ahead and um, stop by and see me again. We're, I do this most nights and I am always glad to have the company. So thanks everyone. We'll see you the next time. Bye now.